Well, it's just great being here with you uh, today. Let me have a look at you. Because when you're in the front row, you don't see all the faces you see until you get up and have a look and you say, well, you're a good looking bunch, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, on the most part, of course. Um, I, well, I am so pleased to be back in this neck of the woods. We've been away for 35 years from, from Queensland. We've only just got back. And uh, this was my old stomping ground. I was a university student at the, at the Uni of Queensland, Queensland Uni, and we lived with six other Christian guys at Ashgrove. So that's yeah. next door. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I had on our youth committee um, a young lady who lives at Newmarket. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And. Um, well, she is now my wife. <laughs> uh, and so I would, uh, I would go and she'd live with about three or four girls, Christian girls, and um, um, I would often go there for, for a meal. <laughs> yeah, and um, one, one night I, she made lasagna for me, you see. And I thought, an Aussie girl who can cook lasagna like that? <laughs> you can't let her go! <laughs> so I married her. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. So it's just great being back here in this part of the world. And we're here to stay now. Um, we've bought a place at Victoria Point, so that's not far away. And uh, got a little tinny, doing all things Australian, again. <laughs> anyway, I'm not here to talk about all that. <laughs> so let's, um, let's just open up the, the, the scripture at a very interesting ch uh, chapter. In fact, if you want to understand the heart of God, this is the chapter that you need to really dig into. It is Luke chapter 15. Now, most Christian people have a heart for God. But having a heart for God is very different from having the heart of God. And uh, so we can have a heart for God that's expressed through worship, that's expressed through prayer. Um, but then when that service is finished, then we walk out of there and we are totally indifferent to the world that we live in. How can that be? Well, it's just simply because we've got a heart for God that's expressed in the service but we don't necessarily have the heart of God that is expressed outside the service. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. 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 So if you're interested in having the heart of God, then Luke 15 is for you. Luke 15 is Jesus telling three stories. He's talking to tax collectors. He's talking to Pharisees. He's talking to both extremes of society. And he, this whole chapter is just three stories, three well-known stories. There's the lost sheep, there's the lost coin, and there's the lost son. Okay? It's lostness. That's what it's all about, this, this chapter. Finding what's, what's been lost. Now, I'd like to just zero in this morning on um, the second story. The lost coin. Uh, it's, it's such an interesting chapter because it's Jesus talking about his heavenly father. And he puts a real human spin on it. I mean, my, my concept of God is sitting on a throne surrounded by glory. Uh, uh, are you, yeah. you identify with that? Yeah. yeah. But this is anything but that. Here's a woman who's stressed out. <laughs> I mean, is God stressed out? <laughs> well, apparently he is. Jesus is giving a story, and each of the principal characters is, in fact, his father. He's a shepherd looking for a sheep, he's a woman looking for a coin, and he's a father waiting for a son to return. So Jesus is giving a real kind of human side to the father. Interesting, isn't it? And so, let's read this story. We'll read just the first two verses to get the context, and then we'll jump down to verse 8. And that's when we'll read the story of the lost coin. So I think we've got it up on the screen. Here we go. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near Jesus to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man receives sinners 
and eats with them. So let's jump now uh, to verse 8. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You see, with this parable that talks about money, uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, what value does God place on the human soul? We all have a soul, but what value does God actually place on that soul that you have? Well, we do have an indication, don't we, with that verse of Scripture in Matthew 16, where he says, And what will it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Wow. Uh, that shows you that for God, a soul is very, very valuable. Why? Why is a human soul so valuable for God? Well, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 is going to give us an indication. And we will understand why a soul is so important to God. So here we are. This is the creation narrative. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living person or more accurately, the man became a living soul. Okay, so you get the picture. God creates a man out of dust, brings dust together, gives it a bit of shape, couple of arms, couple of legs, couple of feet so he won't fall over, a head, couple of eyes, a nose, a mouth, two ears, dust. Um, how valuable is dust? So what's a, what's a kilo of dust worth in Brisbane these days? They're giving it away. Right. So, so what God has created has got, for the time being, no value whatsoever. But, second aspect of creation, God breathes into those, those nostrils made of dust. He breathes into it the breath of life. The breath of God. And now he becomes a living soul. And that's where the value is. The value is the breath that you have in you. That you're carrying around in you. The breath of God gives you value. And that's why God cannot just accept losing a soul. Because to lose a soul would be to lose part of him. Now you've got to understand this. I'll, I'll, I'll help you understand it a little better. Now, I know ladies that uh, your bag, your handbag, is full of treasures. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Come on. But did you know, ladies, that a man's wallet also is full of treasures. That's right. So um, let's have a look at what's in a man's wallet that gives it a bit of value, all right? <laughs> well, the first thing I'd like to look at, and I wish I had a third hand here, <laughs> is this. Oh, this is so helpful. Yeah. Recognize what it is, don't you? Yeah, yeah. it's a driver's license. That means that if ever I forget who I am, <laughs> then I just have to pull this out and have a look and say, oh, that's right, that's my name. That's my identity. But it's also my, my key to being free to go where I want to go. I mean, with this, I can get in my car and I can go anywhere. 
Except, Anywhere. Except New South Wales. <laughs> In Queensland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I don't want to lose this, right? No. No. What else do we have here? Oh. <laughs> oh, look. Look at this. Oh, what's this? <laughs> this is the key to my considerable fortune. <laughs> the amazing thing with this thing here is that whenever I go to those, to those money machines, every time I play, I win. <laughs> here comes the money. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I can't lose this. I tell you, I'd feel pretty bad if I lost that. So what else is there? Oh, we got a few. We got a few notes in there, if I can find them, but that's not really what gives it some value. But there is something even more important than what I've shown you that is here, and I certainly don't want to lose that. And that is that. That's my wife, Denise. <laughs> there she is. Woo! Now, I don't want to lose her because she's cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, so you're getting the picture. I don't, uh, this is really a part of me. I, I've got a lot of things tied up in here, in this wallet, you see. 